Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of School of the Holy Beast, a Japanese exploitation film from 1974. Now I would like to begin this review by quoting an informative paragraph from Jasper Sharp's excellent book, Behind the Pink Curtain, The Complete History of Japanese Sex Cinema. From page 224, and I quote, Films about Buddhist nuns, ama, are one thing, but the number of softcore fetish flicks featuring those of Catholic variety, the Shu Dojo, produced by Japan's major and not so major studios during the 1970s and early 1980s, is quite phenomenal. The pink industry spawned a number of these, including Kan Mukai's Catholic Nun Secret from 1978, and Mamoru Watanabe's Hell Rope Catholic Nun from 1981, but Nikatsu were probably the most active in this field. Masaru Konuma's Cloistered Nun Runa's Confession from 1976, we've already mentioned in an earlier chapter in this book, but to this film and Fuji's Catholic Nun Rope Hell, we can also add Nobuaki Shirai's Catholic Nun, Aching Within Black Robes, 1980, and two films from Koyu Ohara, Catholic Nun Lucia, Disgraced, 1978, and Catholic Nun, Wet Rope Confession, 1979. The mother superior of all these Nipponese nudie nun extravaganzas, the one which forged the path for all of these successors, came from Toei a few years earlier in the form of Norifumi Suzuki's School of the Holy Beasts from 1974, unquote. So does that introduction set the mood for you? Anytime I need a laugh, I just look up the titles for Japanese pink films from back in the day. They're hilarious. Like, who would... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to stop there. So what is the plot of School of the Holy Beast? Yumi Takawa... I'm sorry. Yumi Takigawa has always wanted to know what happened to her mother inside the mysterious Sacred Heart Convent. And now as an undercover sister. She'll get a first-hand look at the horrors within her, a lecherous archbishop, and she uncovers many dark secrets. The convent also practices brutal discipline and encourages masochistic rituals. So after our protagonist arrives at the convent very early in the film, there's a nice little introduction regarding the basic principles of being a nun. However, immediately after that scene, we get an idea that there's something very wrong with this place because one of the girls decides to whip herself in the back for thinking impure thoughts. Now this is encouraged by the convent. Of course, human nature is present and some of the ladies break the rules or push back a bit and when that happens, they need to be punished more thoroughly. So this pink nunsploitation film has a healthy amount of dubious content like cat fights, uh, lovers between the different people inside, and whippings of naked women, sometimes involving thorned rose stems. The most memorable and shocking sequence, however, in my opinion, is the act of torture involving salt water and a situation where urination is forbidden for long periods of time. So it's basically a pee torture sequence that is absolutely grueling to watch, because we can all relate to it, to a degree. At some point in your life, this had to have happened to you. It's, it has happened to me a few times. You have had to pee uncontrollably, but for some reason you were unable to find a, a, a toilet or a facility for a period of time. And this happened to me at the border when crossing a border uh, into Canada because the border line was real long and there's nowhere to go to the bathroom, so that was tough. There was another time where I was out of town on a job and... I had to go, but it was only like a 15-minute drive to the hotel from the restaurant, so I'm like, ah, I could hold it. Traffic jam took like 45 minutes, and I'm sitting there just, it was literally torture. So, it's, it's an excru excruciating experience, so School of the Holy Beast captures that agony better than any other film I've ever seen. It's quite a specific kind of agony, too. Also, the final revenge sequence is also rather effective. Now one thing I want to make clear is that this movie does have a certain entertainment factor that many other exploitation films lack. I probably should have started the review with this because most people probably haven't 
or probably clicked off the video by now. You know, I'm not like the biggest fan of this kind of movie, simply because many of them, they lack artistry, and they're trashy to the point of being tedious and boring. Like, I don't mind tr trashy films, but if it's too repetitive, I just get bored. And I've made this point many times before on this YouTube channel, whenever I've talked about directors like Hisiasu Sato, Koji Wakamatsu, or Takashi Ishii, because those are three directors who are capable of avoiding those flaws, and they serve as counterexamples to basically the norm. And this is also true of some Hong Kong Category 3 filmmakers that I've covered. Now, in regard to Norifumi Suzuki, the director of this film, I'm not that familiar with him. You know, Sex and Fury is probably the only other Suzuki film that I've seen. Uh, that one was pretty good, but not as impactful as School of the Holy Beast. This movie has style to it, for sure. You know, the atmospheric first shot, when you first see, like, the convent building, is really, really nice, really cool. And certain sequences are filmed with, like, a visual flair. This movie is very pleasant on the eyes, and I'm not just talking about the boobies. Direction and cinematography are quite good. Also, it actually has a pretty good story to it, I think. You know, it's kind of a, an investigation revenge flick where our, you know, uh, we follow our protagonist as she progresses with her infiltration, tries to figure out what happened to her mom. There's also some backstory to the Archbishop and the Mother Superior that helps kind of flesh things out a bit. There are scenes of psychological manipulation by the people in there as well, which is pretty interesting. In addition, there are a few effectively funny moments, like the scene where some of the nuns strip their clothing to see if one of them stole some money. It's just so absurd the way it plays out, it's actually kind of laughable, and I almost, I almost think it was an intentionally uh, humorous scene. There's also an amusing scene where two men infiltrate the convent and get into some shenanigans. Now, as a viewer, you're going to immediately know what this film is like within the opening 20 minutes. I mean, we get nudity within the opening five minutes of the film, and the punishments for the naughty characters arrive fairly early in the runtime as well. So within the opening 20 minutes, you know what this film's about. And this is certainly not a movie for most people, I would say. And to be honest, the premise itself should be enough for you to make that determination on whether or not you want to watch this. Um, after listening to this review, you should 100% know whether or not you want to watch this movie. Personally, you know, movies like this for me are kind of like a refreshing experience because they're, they're so different from a lot of other stuff out there, especially nowadays, and especially even if you compare them to other exploitation films. You know, School of the Holy Beast is it's not the kind of film that I would want to watch all of the time, but it definitely serves as like a palate cleanser and a change of pace film. So you can say that I recommend this depending on, on whether or not the, the premise sounds good to you. So uh, just uh, take that as you may. It's currently available on Region 1 DVD in the United States. Um, I actually rented it on the Netflix DVD rental service, which still exists. Uh, I still have the Netflix DVD service, so I still get those DVDs in the mail, and this was on there. So you have that as well. And as always, I'll see you next time. Hopefully.